Good afternoon, I'm Jacob Gordon. Chancellor John Dunn posted on his blog this afternoon. The spring numbers are good news for retention. Well, today was day five of the Murfreesboro teachers strike and families are coping with students now a week out of school. The two anchors for the Carbondale Strip would be the Amtrak station and the university. And an Illinois lawmaker has introduced a new bill that would mean that you no longer have to pump your own gas. It might be kind of easy to roll up to a gas station and have somebody pump your gas for you on a, kind of a dreary day like I know, this today. Yeah, you're right. It appears our region may be in for another flood battle this spring. Pritzker says legislation targets cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and other tobacco products, adding it's intended to reduce tobacco use among teens and young adults by preventing them from starting. Joining me now is rodeo competitor Caitlin McCorder. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you bought a Lucky Day Lotto ticket in Decorn, you may want to check it. The first home game is April 6th as the Cards take on the Dodgers. All right, first time at sports, how do you think I did? Hey, pretty good. I'm I talked with city leaders and students at SIU about how they feel about the changes. So we remember the strip when it was vibrant, uh, when it was uh, jam-packed with people. And once thriving avenue of businesses in Carbondale is now finding to maintain its status. But Carbondale Mayor Mike Henry says it wasn't always the case. Uh, we didn't have any vacant buildings. Um, and it gradually with the decline in enrollment at SIU, that's put some stress on the businesses in the, in the downtown area. In the past five years, enrollment at SIU has dropped from more than 17,000 students in the fall of 2015 to 11,695 this fall, the lowest enrollment in almost 30 years. The dwindling number of students can not only be felt across campus, but throughout the city as well. Well, in the old days, we used to have 22, 23,000 pairs of feet walking up and down the strip. We no longer have them walking up and down the strip. School of Business Dean Terry Clark says the strip resembles a mall. The, the way a mall works is you have two anchor stores. You have two big stores, Nordstrom's at one end and let's say Macy's at the other. And once you have these two big uh, attractive stores, the idea is uh, that they pull people back and forth so that the retail space between those two stores becomes valuable because of all the feet that are walking by them. The two anchors for the Carbondale Strip would be the Amtrak station and the university. You know, but when you have a town that has a lot of, you know, for rent signs or closing signs, it kind of, it, it discourages people from wanting to join this university. In the past year alone, several businesses have gone up for sale or announced their closure, including Fat Patties, 710 Bookstore, Hangar 9, PK's Bar, Sticks, and most recently, Pinch Penny Pub. And while some businesses are closing, Carbondale Main Street continues to promote the downtown district. The executive director thinks it's not just a lack of business. And while several businesses are for sale, they're not closing. If there's not an owner that steps in, they're, you know, it's not a closure. It's somebody looking to retire. We have owners who are, have been in that businesses, those businesses for 25, 30, 40 years sometimes ready to transition out. Uh, the ones that I know personally, their uh, children aren't really interested in taking over the business. If your kid doesn't want it, it's not like there's a lot of backup plan. And while some remain open while searching for buyers, businesses like Fat Panties, 710 Bookstore, and Pinch Penny are closed. The decline of popular local businesses have left some students regretting their decision to come to SIU. If I could redo it, I would not come to SIU. And others miss the iconic establishments, which are nothing but memories now. If you come down one week and you get fat patties and, you know, next time you come down, they're closed. It's like, it's a good burger and now it's not here anymore. A lot of the businesses that were here when I got to uh, Carbondale are steadily just been closing. It's actually taken a much of a number on the Carbondale economy as well. You know? But Clark stays optimistic. Uh, we didn't get into this place overnight and coming back from it. And we'll, we'll never be... It'll be a different Carbondale, but you know, it's always a different world. You know, fast forward 10 years anywhere and, it, and things change. So, but I'm confident we're coming back. To that end, city leaders hope a multi-million dollar redevelopment project, including streetlights and sidewalks, a tax incentive program for businesses, and a planned multimodal transportation center replacing the Amtrak station could launch the strip into the next generation.
but we just have to weather the storm. The new multimodal facility will house the region's public transportation providers Amtrak and Greyhound bus service, allowing for seamless connections between all modes of transportation. The project will also include the region's first bike sharing service. The city plans to spend most of 2020 on the design process, but they plan to break ground for the center in 2021. Attracting people who are like me. Kids from across the state headed out to Touch Nature for an overnight camp. But this isn't your usual camp. It's important for them to come to Camp Beta so that they can meet other people with type 1 diabetes. Campers were able to interact with other kids with type 1 diabetes. Just meeting all the people with diabetes like me and just like having somebody that knows what it feels like. Campers were able to go horseback riding and participate in other activities throughout the two day event. One camper we talked with says the camp event helps her realize she isn't the only one who has type 1 diabetes. It's kind of a relief for them because they know that it's a camp designed for diabetics and not a camp designed for um, like a certain activity or a certain interest. Some parents travel several hours just to bring their kids to Camp Beta. They say it's helpful for other campers to interact with each other and it's formatted to be easy for them. The camps there were very expensive and a week long and large and all those things would have really intimidated my 12 year old where this was smaller, low key, free. But Camp Beta isn't just for kids. Parents are encouraged to attend the workshops and talk with other parents on the second day. Coming to Camp Beta, it's like, you know, you hear the stories of all the other campers and the keynote speakers and you realize that, you know, yes, it's a little different. You just have to be a little more careful, but you know, everything is very doable and everything usually works out fine. Overall, parents agree Camp Beta brings them a sense of relief. It is nice when you can let your child go somewhere where you know someone knows how to take care of her. For Evening Edition, I'm Jacob Gordon. When you think of therapy, you usually think of talking to a therapist or doing physical therapy. But for some kids and adults in Southern Illinois, their definition of therapy is different. It's out of town, it's nice, it's peaceful out here. After a busy week, it's nice to enjoy a peaceful Saturday morning. But for some, they head to Giant City Stables for a therapy session. So it's a therapeutic riding program that they benefit from the feel of the horse, the ride of the horse, and it helps with memory, it helps with muscles, it helps with speech. It's just an amazing program. Specialized Equine Service is a program where kids with a disability get to ride a horse. Um, a lot of the kids don't see it as a therapy. It's actually fun. Oh, Meet Wyatt. He has a rare syndrome which causes him to have seizures and mental delays. He's not scared of things, you know, as far as, you know, being shy or something like that, where he comes here and riding that horse really kind of builds a lot of confidence for him. Wyatt has been riding with SES since April, and his father says he can see progress. With his social skills, he used to be very, very shy where now he comes here and he's more and more, he'll, he can't really talk just because of his delayed muscle growth, but you'll hear him try to tell people good morning now. You'll hear him try to say hi, and he's starting to say, become more of a social person now coming here. SES is not only for kids. I'm a prior Iraq veteran. They also have a program for veterans. It's not like a therapy session where you're going to talk to a therapist. They're healing with the horse. The riding program for veterans is once a week, and participants say it's a great way to help with healing. You get to come here and then you talk to other veterans, even it may be Vietnam, it could be Iraq like me, or it could be, you know, really any type of conflict, you know, any type of veteran. Thank you for joining us tonight. Watch River Region Evening Edition at 5, Monday through Thursday. Have a good night.